India has made history by becoming the first country to land near the South Pole of the Moon. And while this is a huge success for the country and for ISRO, the journey for the scientists in India has just begun as we will now wait uh, about 14 days of data from the uh, Vikram lander and the Pragyan rover. Now, interestingly, there are a lot of technologies that have made that is going to make uh, the data uh, possible from uh, the moon. And with me today, I have uh, um, uh, Mr. Akash Sinha, who is the CEO of uh, Omnipresent Robotech, who incidentally has given the eyes to the Pragyan rover and whatever data we see from the rover in the coming days that is uh, partly thanks to uh, Mr. Akash and not just that those eyes are actually helping the rover navigate the moon as we speak. So uh, thank you so much for joining us and um, congratulations it's been a long long wait for you. Well congratulations to the entire country I think it's a big achievement for all of us and especially people who've been working on this project, for them it's definitely a very satisfying, very, and I'd say also a lot of sense of relief that it has finally happened. Right. Right. So your journey with ISRO and the Chandrayaan mission is not uh, from this mission. You have been associated with uh, it since Chandrayaan 1. So can you tell us a bit about your, uh, you know, contribution there? Yeah. So actually, yeah, we got associated with Chandrayaan mission right from Chandrayaan 1. So when Chandrayaan 1's orbiter went, we supplied some of the modules that helped the Chandrayaan 1 orient itself around the moon. You know, the right. orbiter that was going, it needs to find its own position, direction. So those modules were done by us. And that was a very good learning experience for us. And then we kept our association and we were associated as part of Chandrayaan 2 and 3, where we developed this software for the Pragyan rover. And the software has been done very smartly so that we can keep the size of the size, weight and cost of the rover really small. Right. And, you know, uh, once uh, one of my ex-professors had told me that you can, you know, if you be really smart in the software, you can go very uh, low cost in the hardware. Right. And, you know, that's what we did. Right. And, uh, but, but even, uh, you know, before we go to that, I wanted to say, there's a big significance of this uh, entire Chandrayaan uh, 3 landing. Why? Because, see, Chandrayaan 1 found a lot of water on moon. Huh? Right. Enough water to fill an entire dull lake. Huh? There's so much water. And that has started a new lunar race. You know, for 50 years, nobody was going there. Right. Once Chandrayaan 1 found water there, now everybody wants to get there. You know, Russia, US, Japan, UK, everybody sending their missions over there. And this is all happening because of Chandrayaan 1 finding so much water right, over there. Right, no? right. And now the, because of so much water, we can actually think about setting up human colonies. We can think about generating oxygen out of mm -hmm. water, maybe growing plants, maybe living in dome-shaped dome environments. Right. And even building a space center there. No? Right. Because there, from water, we can extract hydrogen, which will become rocket fuel. So we could build a space station there that could be used for future missions for Mars and other right, planets. Right. And that's why it's such a big deal what we've been able to achieve right, over there. Right. So, you know, uh, like you mentioned, uh, the Chandrayaan 1 had an impact probe that was dropped on the surface of the moon, which, uh, you know, it just sent up a, a, a cloud of dust, yeah. which was studied and that itself revealed presence of water. Absolutely. Now, just imagine we now have cameras and a rover uh, near the South Pole and that is actually going to look at the surface and, you know, detailed analysis is what we are going to get. So, uh, tell us a little bit about the rover itself. Why is it that a specialized set of camera and software, <coughs> mm. why a specialized set of camera and software was required uh, for this rover? So, uh, we have not used any expensive 3D LIDARs, flash LIDARs, which, you know, let's say, other space organizations have used. Huh? We have only used a pair of eyes, you know, just like our two pair, uh, uh, one pair of eyes that we have, we are able to navigate the entire world easily. Right. Huh? That's because the brain, the software in our brain is really smart. Huh? Right. And something similar we have done, we are depending only on just two cameras over there. Those two cameras generate slightly different images, 
they can then be combined to create a 3D model. Mm -hmm. huh? And so once that 3D model is created, then the rover knows, okay, where do I have to go? How far uh, maybe a rock is or a crater is? Can I climb a particular rock? Which direction it is? And once it knows all that, it can plan a safe path. Right. And now why we had to do this was because there was a big challenge in trying to get images from moon. See, right. That is that is a question a lot of viewers actually have is that now that we are on the moon, why are we not seeing continuous images from the rover? So, yes, that's because on the moon, you don't have geo fiber net. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it takes about 10 minutes just to download one or two images from moon. Right. So we can't be doing this in real time. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very uh, so. What we do is that we let the rover capture the images. We let it build a three D model, and we let it operate pretty much autonomously. Right. All we tell from Earth is maybe if you are at this point, go explore this area, mm -hmm. uh, and then the rover autonomously drives. It's like a smart, small driverless car. So it will drive around the surface mm -hmm. and figure out, you know, what is there. So. Right. So that means that in future, for future missions, we actually will have a ready-made uh, 3D map in uh, place for yeah. that particular region as well. What I want to understand is how is this system trained? Because uh, it's not as easy as just looking at uh, a, a 2D image, like a camera uh, basically takes a 2D image, but they it does not have the depth perception. So how uh, does this model get trained? So see, what happens is that we've done a lot of training on similar data on Earth. So we worked closely with ISRO and we worked in their labs and we trained it on a lot of moon-like data. Huh? Right. And that is kind of helping it generate the 3D in a much faster way. Huh? Right. See, one of the challenges on moon is that you don't get any color and mm. you don't get any texture. Right, right. Either something is completely white or it's completely black. Mm. Huh? Wherever there's sun, it's white. It's shadow, it's black. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to generate 3D out of that. So we had to train on similar images for this to happen successfully. So were you working with uh, similar just images or were, were you actually, did you actually simulate a terrain? We simulated a complete lunar terrain and how the rover will move around it. So this entire thing was simulated, tested before it actually went there. That's that's really interesting. And uh, remember that all of this uh, decision making the Pragyan rover is doing on its own right now, which uh, again has a, a, a wide variety of, uh, you know, future applications. So this is not just about a rover in Chandrayaan, is it? We do have, uh, we are expecting this same technology to have many applications. So can you, uh, you know, tell us what the future holds for this technology? See, in future, we are planning missions to the sun Aditya mission, then to Venus, to Mars, and in all in, in many of these missions, especially on Mars, when we land there, we'll again have a robot, a rover going there. So the technology that we're developing on Chandrayaan, see, eventually, whenever a space mission ends, we end up on a planet. The final output then has to be generated by a rover or a robot. Right. So this technology will have a lot of applications in upcoming planetary uh, Right, but apart from that, uh, it also has applications on Earth, right, in defense. Oh, yes, and, yes, uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, you know, like, uh, apart from this, apart from the Chandrayaan mission, for omnipresent robot tech right now, what is the future looking like? Because now that, uh, you know, the government has opened up the space sector to private entities, we are seeing a lot of activity in the space sector. Mm -hmm. So what is it uh, that you are planning next? See, uh, uh, you know, we are a robotics and drones company. So apart from space robotics, we've also been building robots and drones for here on Earth. Mm -hmm. We mapped more than 10,000 villages as part of PM Modi's Swamitra scheme across India. So we are pretty much creating a digital map of the entire India at one centimeter resolution. Now that will help the government do proper land allocation, proper land ownership. And so a lot of technologies that, you know, we develop on drones can sometimes be interchangeably used on space mission and sometimes also vice versa. Right. Because what we did on Chandrayaan mission was extremely challenging because we had to do it with very few photographs, very less texture, very limited bandwidth, mm -hmm. very limited camera resolution. So when we face similar challenging situations, let's say in a defense type conflict, border area where we don't have 
enough data i'm sure this technology can be used there right right so in a way uh, you know omnipresent is actually uh, paving the way for future missions uh, not just on this in space but also in uh, various sectors in on earth as well uh, now for all the people who have this question of what is the point of spending so much on uh, you know space missions this is actually the answer uh, the the tech that we develop actually trickles down to touch all of our lives in various ways sometimes we don't even know about it thank you so much mr akash for joining us today i am mohana basu assistant editor at the print we will continue to follow all the chandrayaan 3 updates so do follow us on all social media platforms for the latest news updates